All right, folks, we're going to kick this off. Uh, I'm Mitch Nelson. I'm uh, Managing Director of Adobe's Worldwide Managed Services Program. Uh, and Dean Pinta is uh, here with me to uh, tell you a little bit about what we're doing uh, at Adobe in terms of uh, managed services uh, and uh, next generation apps and uh, platforms. And we'll get the slide deck started in a second. There we go. So as uh, many of you are, you know, many of you are familiar with Adobe uh, from our roots. Uh, we, we started off providing the, the world-class uh, desktop applications for uh, handling uh, documents and uh, images. Uh, our, th these gathered and became the, uh, the Creative Suite uh, offering. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's, that's really how we became known in the industry. Over the last couple of years, we've really had a lot of fun changing this uh, and moving from desktop applications uh, into a cloud-type application. This has allowed us to provide uh, the, um, the code to our customers much more reliably, much more easily. Uh, and it's also really allowed us to move into uh, different areas. Uh, collaboration uh, gets much easier when you're operating, of course, in a cloud framework. Uh, you can store your images, share your images there. We can provide stock imagery. We can do uh, in the cloud uh, processing uh, in ways that you can't really do it uh, on your computer. Um, but that's, that, so that's, that's where we've come to. In fact, we have three different clouds. In addition to our creative cloud, uh, we have our marketing cloud, uh, which is rich in analytics, uh, in targeting, customer targeting systems, uh, in experience management systems, uh, uh, campaign management infrastructure, uh, and a whole lot of things to allow you to understand who your audience is, how you want to reach them. Uh, we also have a document cloud, which is all about uh, the creation of documents, the management of documents, the signing of documents, uh, all of those sorts of things. Uh, so three broad cloud products that we're offering to the general public, uh, all of which allow you to make, manage, mobilize, uh, and measure content uh, and uh, interact with your uh, targets over the internet and through many, many other media. Now, the market is continuously changing. Uh, and so that's where we are today. But we see a number of things that are acting on that uh, offering that we have. Uh, so first among those is the mobile trend. We've seen this coming for a long time. Uh, but it has become really quite amazing that 64, 65% of adults uh, now have a mobile device 10% uh, of those, that's their prime method for interacting uh, with the internet. Uh, in that critical 18 to 29 segment, uh, some of whom, as the, the uh, last speaker was talking about, are still living in their parents' basement. Some of them are uh, off doing other things. 85% uh, of those are using smartphones or other smart devices. Uh, and an amazing 20% use that as their primary connection. No. Um, no broadband uh, connection to desktops uh, at all. So obviously this changes how you uh, are reaching people. It also changes how you are uh, interacting with the systems that control uh, how you are reaching those people because uh, people now want to do that sort of thing on a mobile device as well. Next uh, component that we're seeing is Personalization. Uh, this is through analytics, uh, big data analysis and compression, uh, uh, and um, making sure that uh, you understand how people are interacting uh, with your content to make sure that uh, you're using, you're reaching them efficiently. Uh, 
uh, amazingly uh, decisions. We, we see that our customers that are using analytics are reaching decisions, good decisions, five times faster than customers that are not. Uh, likewise, um, almost half of citizens of constituents that are interacting with personal data uh, interact much more deeply uh, and richly um, with uh, information if you can personalize it for them. So another key trend that we see driving the industry. Next, uh, and certainly uh, as Representative Connolly was talking about in the, uh, the keynote speech, uh, security is becoming incredibly critical. Uh, this is not just for the federal government and the Office of Personnel Management, but uh, Sony getting uh, hit so very badly. Uh, JP Morgan Chase, uh, Home Depot, all sorts of attacks uh, going on out there, all sorts of information uh, being placed at risk uh, and privacy being broken. So three big elements that are impacting things, mobile personalization, uh, and security, uh, all of which are playing across a canvas of customers that require solutions be globally available uh, and always on. So that's what's impacting the market. That's, that's who we need to be, th th those are the trends that we need to be able to interact with and to serve. One of the ways that we're working on right now to reach those, uh, to, to reach those markets and to allow our customers to reach those markets uh, is to uh, create a, um, a, an enterprise cloud, a, a secure private cloud. Uh, so we talked about before our creative cloud where we are uh, rolling our creative products out uh, to uh, our customers, but some of those customers have said, hey, I need to have this be a little bit more secure. I need to have this be uh, a little bit um, uh, more tightly controlled, uh, be customized to meet my needs. Uh, and so our creative cloud uh, and has always been on Amazon, uh, and what we've been working on is uh, essentially cloning it off and uh, cutting the cord. Uh, and so now we are able to deliver uh, mini clouds, if you will, uh, small enterprise clouds uh, contained in Amazon VPCs uh, and delivered in a secure, compliant fashion uh, for our customers. We can provide a number of options around this. Uh, prob probably the most exciting of these, at least to me, uh, is uh, what we call our managed services cloud, where it is a single tenant system. Uh, we can tie it into the customer's framework so that it, it is uh, coming in behind the customer's firewall. Uh, we can tie into the customer's identity systems, either through federated IDs or other uh, means. Uh, the customer controls the password policies, the customer controls the access, uh, and it becomes suddenly a very powerful tool uh, to take those cloud-based capabilities uh, and deliver them to enterprise and government customers with real uh, special restrictions. So we've been doing managed services of this type for a while. Uh, our, our, indeed, Adobe's first SaaS experience uh, started back in 2003 when we were, uh, de started deploying uh, Adobe Connect, our web meeting product. Uh, back in 2007, we did our first uh, major government SaaS initiative, if you want to call it that, uh, Defense Connect Online, uh, button two, for those of you who uh, participated in that uh, program. Uh, and uh, the year after that, we cut our, the beginnings of our partnership with Amazon. Uh, that allowed us to deploy Lifecycle as a managed service, then Connect as a managed service for customers that wanted single tenant uh, secure environments. Um, then uh, AEM, Adobe Experience Manager, uh, was released as uh, something that is available on a single tenant basis on the Amazon cloud for our uh, customers. Our marketing cloud came out that we talked about earlier. Uh, our creative cloud 
uh, most recently our document cloud, and now we've started taking those clouds uh, and making them available on a single tenant basis uh, as a, a tool, as an option for our customers. So let's drill in on what constitutes a managed service, what we're providing, what we're offering to you as part of that. Uh, at, a, at a very high level, it's simply taking the Adobe software. Uh, in this case, we're going to talk about Adobe Experience Manager, which allows a customer to develop an immersive digital experience um, as a website, as a digital asset management system, as an application management system, a forms control system, uh, a digital community. Uh, and you know, the, 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 that, that product is based on open standards, uh, OSGI console. It's Gartner's leader, um, marketing quadrant leader in uh, the WCM category. We've married that up with uh, Amazon's solution, uh, computation, network, storage, all of that. Amazon's the leader uh, in their own quadrant. We put the two of them together, uh, and this is all deployed, operated, managed, supported uh, by Adobe. Going one layer down on that, what we're doing is pre-installing this software for our customers on Amazon server systems, providing a, a known good pre-tested solution uh, of this software in a configuration as requested by the customer uh, that is ready for the customer's customization as they need it. We can scale it using Amazon technology to meet practically any load scenario that we uh, run into. Uh, we monitor for performance, we monitor for security, uh, we keep an eye on the overall infrastructure. We can do it using different combinations of Amazon assets uh, on, with an SLA of anywhere from 99 and a half all the way up through four nines, providing 24 by seven support, monitoring event response uh, in any Amazon region in the world. So that's great, a lot of great technology, but that doesn't go very far without people. Uh, and so the people in the mix are quite critical. Uh, and uh, we, we, we call the role a customer success engineer, or CSE. These are highly trained Adobe employees. Uh, they're experts in Adobe software, in the Amazon systems that the software is running on, uh, and the customization best practices around that software. Uh, all working with the customer, with the customizer, to make sure that we are able to roll out uh, the, um, the, the end desired solution absolutely as quickly as possible uh, for our customers. Now, there are a lot of underlying parts to the story. I'll touch on a few of them here. If you have questions afterwards, come up. Let's talk about them. Uh, but uh, simply put, we are launching the system for the customer, coaching them through the customization process, working with them through bringing the system live, uh, making sure that the performance testing, the security testing, uh, the user acceptance testing has all been done in a way that's going to meet their needs. We're providing the backup, uh, so if something bad happens, we've got the restoration ready to go uh, and can bring the system online quickly and easily. The customer can, up, can customize the system pretty much any way they want. You need extra code on there. You need uh, to uh, alter uh, some of the core settings on the systems. We're going to work with you to make sure that that happens. Uh, and then uh, once that's all done, we will get it all documented, work with you to document all of the customizations uh, into a runbook uh, that helps us operate the system. We work with, of course, Adobe's own professional services organization, but a wide variety of different partners uh, to make sure that the, the, the folks can uh, uh, customize the system as needed to meet your needs. And then we wrap all of that up with other things, not just doing maintenance, 
doing the upgrades of the system for you so you don't have to worry about it, uh, but also doing things like wargaming internally. We're constantly practicing disaster management, disaster support, uh, penetration uh, scenarios, all sorts of different uh, uh, things are uh, parts of our war games that our people are practiced on and trained on. The key of how we deliver all of this is, of course, uh, partially the, uh, the great Amazon infrastructure and all the tools that they provide, and we work very hard to leverage those. Uh, but we also have developed a, uh, what we call Managed Services Central, a command and control infrastructure system that allows us to rapidly provision uh, what the customer is looking for anywhere in the world uh, in a repeatable fashion. So with just a couple of clicks of the mouse, uh, we choose what is going where and how it's structured, uh, and we can launch a, uh, a system uh, in a highly available infrastructure for a customer in three or four hours uh, that would take weeks to uh, stand up and, uh, and configure and deploy on-premise. And we can do it uh, anywhere uh, in the United States, uh, east-west, uh, we also operate in uh, GovCloud uh, and uh, follow the ITAR compliance requirements there. Uh, and uh, we're working in uh, rolling things out to the, uh, the C2S cloud as well. Work doesn't stop uh, once we've got the system deployed, of course. Um, we have a variety of tools that we've built around our software that we bring to the table to help the customer and the customizer test uh, their results, make sure that the system is really capable of sustaining the load that uh, it's supposed to be able to sustain. Uh, we also have tools around uh, things like auto-scaling. Uh, so if you need more capacity and you can't really sustain that load that you uh, need or the load's a little higher, we can uh, feed more capacity in very, very quickly uh, and with uh, no downtime on the system. Of course, we are monitoring using tools from Nagios uh, to uh, Gomez uh, nodes around the country uh, and uh, uh, handling all of the items you would expect, such as garbage collection, tar compaction, uh, all of that sort of thing. So, great, we've got a managed service, we're running this for you. Uh, what, do you what do you start doing with it? Well, one of the great things about bringing in not just individual applications, but multiple platforms and now even multiple clouds, is that you can start stitching these applications together to accomplish a wide variety of different needs. That means that we have to expand the basic offering uh, a little bit more broadly. Uh, so in addition to what I've described, uh, we're handling things like continuous delivery, where uh, we are constantly feeding the updated versions uh, of uh, the latest versions of our software uh, into the infrastructure. Uh, we are um, doing constant diagnostics uh, on the system, looking at how your customizations are interacting with the code uh, and improving things uh, on a continuous basis. Uh, we know that solution adoption is critical, so we can, working through our professional services organization, through our partners, uh, help you with training, help you with usage optimization, helping make sure that the, the, the users of the system that you want to get the word out to can be trained to, uh, to use the application uh, that you're interested in. Uh, and most recently, we can provide a full stack uh, support offering uh, ranging from the uh, Amazon portion of the cloud through our software and up to the customization. So what this allows you to do now is to take elements from the various Adobe platforms, the, the different cloud components that are coming in, uh, and extract from those the applications that you need in order to deploy your solution. Uh, not all of the, app, the, uh, the, the 
uh, platform components may be perfectly aligned, so you can do a little customization on those. Uh, Experience Manager, for example, has a communities offering uh, that is very well set up for uh, building learning communities out of uh, with just a very little adjustment. Uh, and so you can deploy, you, you can tweak that and deploy that in. Uh, Connect has a great chat system, uh, but if it doesn't meet exactly what you need, you can, uh, we, we can bring in another code set uh, and get that online for you. Uh, and uh, that all then allows you to come together uh, with a set of applications out of the box from Adobe supported applications uh, that meet your needs. And as more software is steadily becoming available, the number of platforms uh, and the number of applications that you will see coming from Adobe from all of those clouds that are out there uh, is steadily increasing. And all of these can be delivered to you on a single tenant basis in a secure uh, operating environment. All of these products uh, are already driving along the lines of being mobile enabled. We're a mobile for, for first organization. Uh, they are uh, set up to be secure. Uh, our marketing cloud products, Lifecycle Connect and Experience Manager, are going through FedRAMP certification right now. We expect that certification to uh, come through any day. And uh, we expect the, uh, the other clouds and their applications to uh, be next on the short list for us to roll through. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, analytics is built into a part of all of these sorts of packages. So if you're building a uh, application, our analytics are built into it. You can see how things need to be tuned, how your end users are uh, interacting with the, uh, the app, with your website, with your creative cloud content. Uh, and so that is all folded in. And of course, all of this is running uh, on the Amazon cloud in its uh, global, highly reliable um, operating modes. So I've been up here for a while. Uh, I want to turn it over to Dean. And uh, Dean, if you can give us a, an example of what we're doing here. Sure. Sure. Is my mic on? I'm good? Yeah. Thank you, Mitch. Uh, as Mitch mentioned, um, and this track is about next generation applications. I think next generation applications help any software vendor reinvent themselves. Because we're not just talking about features, and we'll go over some of those. But really, what Mitch has done in Adobe so far is to tell you next generation software companies deliver service. And we think about things that we never had to think about 10 years ago, even, maybe five years ago. Um, we delivered software, and what you did with it, we didn't even know. Even if it was shelfware. We didn't know. You know. But now we actually know so much that we know when the system's up, we know what you do with it, we know how to improve it based on how you use it. And that's where we tie in, I think, to this truly next generation application. Is anyone familiar with Defense Connect Online in the room? Any military people? Um, supports 1.3 million people. Um, last year consumed almost a billion minutes of collaboration. So we're talking about what we sometimes call a very classic webinar you know, collaboration type platform, but they do a lot more with it. And we know what they do with it because we, we maintained it for eight years out of Army data centers. Probably 300 plus servers, physical servers, for production only, not even counting uh, staging development. And when we think about a next generation version of this, obviously that goes to GovCloud. We reduce the footprint probably by 75% in production, greatly reducing cost and then improving functionality. So it, there is a win-win there. If we look at it really from the front end user's experience, they're doing battle update briefs, common operating pictures we'll talk about a lot with, situational awareness. They're doing things with persistent rooms, bringing in drones, many people collaborating, um, emergency operations centers. And they're using one product. But through continuous delivery, and I think Mark Schwartz did a great job at the keynote talking about this. How do we innovate so often that we could actually release software daily? When I look about the original DCO over the last eight years, they iterated their basic platform software twice in eight years, which is probably more than a lot of systems I've seen. Um, we can do it continuously, though. So 
the end user might see federated chat come up because they want presence and awareness, not just the chat that's in Connect. And they can crosstalk between a mobile device like an iPhone to chat right into a Connect room. Maybe take pictures when they're on site in a scene and throw that into a group situation awareness. And then expanded collaboration, you know, expanded mission requirements say, I've just recorded this session, I want to put it in a community of learning so we can do after action review. Not currently a requirement, but if a National Guard unit or you know, a DHS fusion component wants to do that with it, we can, we can update that very quickly. And they can you know, have that type of innovation. So I was smart enough to create a video last night because I was worried I couldn't run my demo. I can't run my demo here. So um, we're going to kind of hopefully give a talk track to this. I'm a little worried about pace. But what we have here is a connect room. Visit us down at booth number eight, I believe it is. Um, and we'll do this live. But this is a room that supports upwards of hundreds of people. We've tested it up to 3,000. Um, I'm obviously in a room where I can be joined by many people. Everything I do, everyone sees. I can turn on my camera, public chat, and I think you kind of get the story of what most people do here. They do a webinar. What I want to switch to is what we call a common operating picture. And this is a use case where we're helping out uh, an environment and we're bringing in some interesting components above and beyond a typical webinar. A webinar, yep, I can screen share. But in this case, we actually build application in this framework that are collaborative. So I have GIS, I have you know, the basics of chat, I can file share obviously, but in this, in this GIS component, I think I zoom out here, um, we start to see that everyone can pop in their location. And everyone can start to contribute to a situational awareness common group picture, if you will. So we see customers keep notes and keep tabs, and they're in these rooms 24-7. Air Force customers actually have eight of these sessions open at any one time, monitoring many different things. So a, a pretty heavy use case that was used across DCO, and this is just showing off one of the custom pods. It's a, it kind of redefines, are we trying to screen share something of interest, or are we bringing that interesting thing into the collaborative environment? And groups do both, really. But once again, this is GovCloud-based, actually was released today. Uh, so it's a good formal announcement. And I think I move on a little bit more. Uh, but clearly, in redefining you know, Adobe as a software provider, this is not in an Army deck. Um, this is in GovCloud. This is managed by our people. When things, God forbid, should have a problem and we have a hiccup in the system, who do you bring to the table? You don't bring a system integrator necessarily. You actually quickly get access to the person who wrote the code, the person who tested it from Adobe. So as a vendor-managed service, um, it, it's an interesting point of true mitigation. Um, here, this is more of a screen sharing application. Here we have another example, and I flipped through the idea of, this is Houston. Um, I'm not sure how many states have had more flooding ever, but clearly they're having a, a very rough year. And in this case, you know, we might use a poll to say, hey, which hospitals have checked in? We have GIS to track around. Think about someone being in the field and taking pictures and uploading that for real-time situational awareness. And then obviously people in more of a command understanding, seeing all this information and directing uh, content. Um, we can flip through different GIS background layers and it might just be a chat. But once again, if I've got 50 people in this room, they're all adding content information for this joint picture. Yes, this is a webinar platform. Yes, you can do virtual classroom training with it. But this is a very interesting use case uh, that's used a good amount. Uh, I think I've got yet another one. What I like here is, um, you know, here are evacuation routes in Houston and people uploaded uh, actual video. So this could be video from a, just a bystander. Everyone in the field is a sensor, you know, and I, I think the previous talk we, we discussed that a little bit with DHS. One of the questions was, what do we do with all this video? Well, in this sense, real-time video, we're sharing it. And note that this entire session is being recorded. So up in the right-hand corner, there's a little red dot going. What can I do with this information for an after-action review? Um, I can actually bring it back into the system, add more metadata, and drive people right to specific points of interest. One that would be interesting is 
maybe someone just didn't upload data, they actually have an RPV or a drone in the field. And this is giving them real-time video feedback, and they're directing that information based on instruction from someone else in the room. So imagery, live, uh, video, live, um, captured. And I kind of depicted the whole story here in the, in the lower right-hand corner. But driving information from the some theater perspective back into the system, becoming a force multiplier as far as how do I disseminate that and learn and do it better next time. Uh, that's pretty much the demo. If we could just maybe advance, because I'm worried about time. I'm not sure if that's possible. There we go. So when we say next generation, um, next generation is now. So this is being used today. This use case is Texas National Guard. This is a quote from their J6. Helped us save hundreds of lives uh, over the last month with this tool. Um, not everyone can afford to do if you're in the Army Command Post of the Future, an amazing collaboration situation tool. And they actually use Connect to then stream it to more endpoints. Um, but when I drive this information to a mobile device, a tablet, any HTML5 type browser, across operating systems, and have the mission critical nature and take care of it the way that Mitch has said, um, we're operating in a different way. You know? And we are part of this mission. We join, every company who signs up for managed services, we're joining these teams. Uh, so, we're very proud of these type of solutions in public sector, especially um, when you've got a customer with that type of quote. I think our marketing guys freak when they see that, you know, so. Uh, any questions uh, for either Mitch or myself? That pretty much does it. I know we stand between you and lunch, but we're happy to take questions. Other than what's for lunch? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, so the, uh, the question is, uh, I, I, I talked about three clouds that Adobe had today, uh, and what's the thought process around uh, how do we create a cloud uh, and, and what might be uh, coming in the future on that. Um, so certainly the clouds represent strategic focus areas uh, for Adobe's products. Uh, and uh, the, the, the battle over the last uh, three, four years has been to get uh, our products transformed to such a way that we can deliver them uh, in these sorts of formats. Uh, so right now, I think uh, this is, you know, the, the, the three primary areas that we're focusing the company on. Uh, I don't know of any uh, other uh, areas for expansion uh, in the short term. Uh, but uh, the, this, you know, we're, we're looking at a variety of different longer-term uh, capability sets. Uh, the way you'll probably see us continue to grow is uh, through additions to these clouds uh, rather than uh, addition of more clouds. Uh, and, uh, and then my particular job is to bring the capabilities of all of these clouds back into a, a managed services framework so that we can uh, offer it uh, more from a mix and match approach. Correct. Okay, good. So uh, the question is, when I'm talking about a private cloud, what did I, uh, what did I mean there? Uh, so we literally are taking the capabilities uh, that would be available within, say, a multi-tenant connect platform uh, and operating that on a single tenant basis uh, for a customer. Uh, or things that are within the creative cloud framework. Uh, that's again something that was completed and signed off this morning, so very hot off the press. Uh, uh, being able to deploy those for customers that have uh, a HIPAA or a FedRAMP or a GLBA type requirement. So uh, security, convenience, uh, enterprise customers that uh, want to make sure all of their data is staying within their world just like governments. Yeah. So uh, ultimately, <laughs> excuse me, three and a half billion, three, you know, of Adobe as a commercial company are these multi-tenant large clouds where I go to get creative cloud for my <laughs> home, you know, or students or whoever. But certain enterprises have gotten so big and because of security and compliance, they like that functionality for us to offer it to them, they want their own cloud. 
And that's where we manage service of that cloud specifically for them. Given, I mean, I was at TSA yesterday, he brought up a new authentication device from Exedium. Oh, you have to use that. What would we do if we were serving multi-tenants? You know? So their private cloud, we add that on the front end with their authentication, and then they are exposed to a lot of the function. I can't say all, but we started to bring pieces and parts, getting it fed ramped, so that they have enough to engage government business. It also allows for considerable customization. Uh, obviously, yeah. if you're running in a multi-tenant cloud, your ability to customize the software uh, or uh, react when the customer says, wait, wait, I, I can't do an upgrade next week. I've got a critical presentation or a situation that I'm dealing with. You know, I, if it's a multi-tenant cloud, sir, I, I'm, I'm sorry, we have to move ahead with this. We have other customers that are depending on it. If it's your cloud, no problem. Tell us when you're ready to move forward. Yeah. Uh, so it gives us a lot of flexibility. Security is certainly part of it, but uh, upgrade timing, customization capability, a lot of flexibility there, uh, and uh, when we manage it the way you need it managed. Good. So the question was, uh, how are these clouds priced? Uh, are they on demand or are they uh, long-term uh, type commitment? Uh, a little bit of both uh, is the answer. Um, we normally uh, would engage in a multi-year contract for the operation of one of these systems. Uh, but if you need uh, extra capacity within that contract, we certainly can handle that very tactically and uh, as needed. Uh, we also are very interested in situations where we work together to deliver something that is essentially kept in reserve uh, and uh, imagine a, a scenario like this uh, that you can deploy as you need to respond to a, a disaster situation and we could deploy those uh, upon request uh, if that was desirable. So the question is, could we put this together, have a very large conference set up for one week, and then tear it all down again? Uh, certainly within our capability set. Uh, we find that a lot of these, so uh, one example of a customer that we work with today is the International Monetary Fund. Uh, IMF has two large meetings a year, uh, and they need a huge amount of capacity from us during those meetings. Uh, th they don't want to completely shut the system off. They still need, people need to be able to go back and get the information in it and things like that. Uh, and so we, we operate in a very, very thin mode for five months of the year and then put a very robust system out there for them and then bring it all down again and run thin uh, is what we've seen, the, the, the more the use case. Uh, but if you've got a, a, a zero to, uh, Huge. Uh, let's talk about it. We can figure something out on that. Okay. Any other questions? That's good. All right. Thanks so Dean time. and I will be uh, around here afterwards. Come on up. Thank you very much for coming.